Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today went from being an orphan in Ukraine to becoming a fitness champion in the United States and much, much more. He is Michael Vitali Vernon, and today we are going beyond fitness. Hey, Michael, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Well, hello. Welcome, and thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Michael, for I know for, for a few years now, and you have such an incredible story. I mean, it, I'm so excited to feature you and to have people just really know where you were and where you are now. But let's start from the beginning. Can, can you tell me about some specific experiences uh, that you had as an orphan in Ukraine? Well, Rusty, um, I was kind of born as an orphan, basically. Um, you know, my mother, she, um, she was, a, she was a, a drunk and prostitute, so she abandoned us early on. I was four or five years old. So at that age, early on, I learned to survive, you know, survive for myself. And part of that survival was a, a stealing food from the neighbors. Um, and looking back on the hindsight, I had to do what I had to do to survive. But day in, day out, it was quite obvious that we didn't have food. So I would always be stealing food from the neighbors. <laughs> that's, that's just what you do. Um, the, the challenges was that we didn't, I didn't have an adult figure. Um, so I was raised with my two sisters who were also um, orphans. Uh, they ended up going to orphanages um, at the age of uh, six. Um, when my mother abandoned me, my father died. I, was, uh, I went to the orphanage. Um, and at the orphanage, uh, there was a good amount of kids there as well. Um, and amongst those kids, I made friends. And part of that is that we would, uh, we would talk about our parents who weren't there for us. Uh, so that really made us bond um, as, as people. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know um, what else to tell you other than that, than that it was tough. No, I, Michael, I, I, you know, when you're saying that, you know, food, I mean, just basic survival that you actually had to steal food to survive. I mean, that's, that really says a lot right there. I'm not proud of it, but I had to do what I had to do to survive. Um, and that character uh, at that time, it, it really moving forward as an adult, it created a, uh, a, a mindset of, of, uh, survival. I'm not saying don't steal. I'm not saying steal and I'm not condoning stealing, but what I'm saying is the mindset of survival that I have today is there and it's, it's been able to help me through, throughout my life. Michael, tell me about your, uh, you being adopted at age 12 and your brother at age 10. Well, my, uh, First of all, when I was adopted, um, it's it's a miracle, really, Rusty, because uh, it's unheard of to get adopted at that age. We were quite old. Um, I know what helped me was the fact that I was I looked like I was a seven year old, <laughs> you know, so that helped a lot. Um, obviously, I didn't have the nutrition to to look like a twelve year old, uh, but that was a miracle. My brother uh, and I, we were both orphans we were raised together we're close um and my mother who who's a who's a big figure in my life um she you know she went to ukraine with with my father uh and they had cash on them on each side of the uh, of the of the um uh, um like the raincoat you know the raincoat when they had to travel to be concealed and at that time that's what they had to do 
So looking back at that, I, I realized the, the sacrifice they made to go to Ukraine at that time, a third world country with all that cash to adopt us, uh, you know, because it's a cash society. Um, so looking back at that, um, being a 12 year old, get adopted as a miracle, you know, with my brother. Oh, that's, that's truly extraordinary. And it says a lot about your mom. And can you tell me how Arnold Schwarzenegger has influenced you? <laughs> yeah, as we were talking earlier, um, being in the United States, the culture is, is different. Uh, I had the language barrier, uh, the culture barrier, uh, so I would often find myself in the library uh, looking at books. I would look at a lot of pictures. And uh, one of the books, early books that I found was a book by Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, where he had pictures. Um, and that uh, paved, paved the way for my, my career today. Uh, he's very inspiring uh, and, and very active individual at that time. Uh, and in Ukraine, uh, at the gyms, we had a lot of posters of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I kind of already knew what to look for in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michael, you know, then you also, you became a United States Marine in 2010 to 2015 for five years. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to join the Marines? That's a great question. Uh, I've always been in the mindset of uh, joining, of, of doing something that's that's difficult, and uh, and at that time I wanted to serve my my new country, you know, USA, and I thought that joining joining the most respectable force would be uh, would be the way to go. Um, so I joined the United States Marine Corps in 2010, uh, three months after graduating high school, um, graduated high school, and off I was to boot camp. And I haven't looked uh, back since. So what did, what are some things that you learned uh, during your time as a Marine? Well, I'm grateful to be out, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Marine Corps uh, really taught me discipline, uh, farther discipline. Um, it, it, it taught me to grow up very, very quickly. Um, and it, and they taught me uh, that brotherhood is everything because there's a lot of young men who are going through the same uh, hardships that we are in the military. It's, um, uh, you know, the, the Marines uh, get two types of people. There's uh, people that come from the affluent families and there are people, uh, man, young men join who are from uh, troubled families and uh, Marine Corps, it doesn't, you know, discriminate. It, everybody is one and people are able to really bond over their different uh, diversified backgrounds. And, and for me, I kind of fell in between and, and I did all the typical things military does, you know, uh, all the stereotypical things such as uh, drinking. Um, and this is, uh, and this is the, what I've learned from the, the Marine Corps. I'm seven years sober today. Uh, and um, I've learned uh, I've learned that that behavior in the military uh, was really, if I was to get out, it was really kind of holding me back as as an athlete, as a professional, and as a friend. Uh, so I did learn that um, I don't need to drink to cope with life. And uh, Marine Corps really creates that foundation with the hardship that a lot of young men they drink in there to cope with you know, with, with the military industrial complex. And I was, I was that story. I drank uh, through military, but today I'm sober. I'm seven years sober and I'm grateful for that. But that's what I've learned as well is, is that I don't have to drink to live life. No, that's great insights uh, hearing, you know, those things from you, Michael. And, you know, you, you have won multiple uh, bodybuilding competitions. You're a fitness champion. Um, you won the Paradise Cup. Uh, tell me, tell me why you wanted to, or how you got into these competitions. Uh, funny story. Um, one of my, 
uh, uh, dear friends at that time uh, in the Marine Corps, he, I've always been fit, you know, um, uh, ever since I picked up that Arnold Schwarzenegger book at the age of 12. So I've always had that fitness foundation and, and that's, that's my medicine. But um, I remember a Marine approaching me in the gym and he said, hey, Michael, you should join this competition. You'll be very good. I bet you'll do very well. And I said, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, I'll stick to what I love to do. And that is workout. <laughs> and then he approached me again and he said, listen, I'll pay for the entrance fee. I'll pay for, for you to compete. It'll be worth it. Well, sure enough, I, 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 I signed up and uh, it was a novice bodybuilding middleweight. Uh, I prepared for about three weeks, you know, um, and I ended up winning my division. So that was in 2014 uh, a, a, as I was transitioning out of the Marine Corps. Um, <clears throat> and I went on to win another show in 2015, uh, uh, Physique. And then I went on in 2016, a uh, classic Physique. So I ended up winning three, three fitness shows on Hawaii back to back. Um, so that was encouraging. Uh, and then as I went on into California, I won a show over there in California. And then the, somebody said, hey, Michael, um, you know, you should try uh, fitness modeling. Okay, so I went and did that. Um, ended up, I, I, I ended up going to a fitness modeling search at the Olympia. It was in 2015, uh, 16. Uh, ended up placing top seven at the, uh, in the world for the modeling search. Uh, but my height wasn't there, you know, all those, all those guys are very tall, but that didn't discourage me, you know, I didn't win, but that didn't discourage me, I just moved on with, with just working out and, and um, having, li living a healthy life like that. Well, Michael, I gotta say, I mean, you, you have muscles everywhere, I mean, you have muscles in places where I didn't think muscles <laughs> exist. <laughs> Uh, and you're you're also a very highly sought after personal trainer. Can you tell me about that? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I work with clients today who are willing to change. I don't. I, I'm not chasing anybody today. I have one client, uh, uh, Brian, who um, who has lost 100 pounds, and I really work with them closely um it's it really is like raising a child <laughs> you know it's it's mental physical and uh and, and so emotional supportive as well um i use the same philosophy like in your book you know consistency 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 uh um, and that's my philosophy just be consistent um but this gentleman he uh he is willing and anybody that is willing, Rusty, you know, I'm there to serve them. Really, I'm there to serve them. I'm not there to um, make money. I'm there to serve them. I'm here to serve people. No, oh, that's so that's so good to hear, Michael. And you know, besides family, who is someone that uh, was a positive influence in your life in the, the success that you have now? I remember in uh, in 2015, I met. Uh, I, I needed a, as I was um, going into college and in college and getting established as a young athlete and model. There's a lot of a lot of the attention goes all over the place and a lot of things come to you right uh, on the path of success. And I needed to uh, have. I prayed on at having a uh, holistic life coach right and. It was um, shout out to Brandy Kiana Joe, who is wonderful. I've worked with her for uh, five years now, uh, and she's she's a great role model, very professional, and she's really paved the way for me to really be vulnerable when uh, when uh, when sharing my story. And she was that first uh, uh, a professional person who really um, uh, paved the way to to be able to open up and share the story, paint a picture with others. Um, and that led me to join, to go into uh, acting school as well, so I can be more vulnerable and share the experience. And um, that's a whole different uh, conversation there too. No, Michael, and, and you and I met each other because 
A few years ago, we were guest speakers at one of Brandy's uh, amazing events. And yeah. what's, what's, what do you feel is one of the biggest things that she helped you with uh, as a life coach? You know, Brandy, she's, she's really taught me to, to tap into that spiritual side of the, as beings, uh, really to tap into that spiritual side of us. Um, and, and she's, she's always, her words just kind of flow out of her mouth and always so soothing, you know, like a mother <laughs> and, uh, and um, a, a really positive experience, but she really taught me to kind of open up that third eye, right? <laughs> this pineal gland and really to see the world in a bigger picture. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. No, that's great to hear. And I want to ask you, Michael, about my books. You know, you, earlier you mentioned uh, about how important consistency is, and I definitely talk about that. And, and what, are some, what are some other things in the book um, that really stood out to you? You know, uh, early on, you, see, uh, you mentioned this, and I, I see this from all the successful coaches, and you're, you're just uh, an anomaly, Rossi. Congratulations on the 22 uh, championships. That's, that's unheard of. Waking up, we all have a choice, uh, and that is when we wake up, are we going to make the bed or not? It's, a, it's such a simple analogy, but it goes very, very far, uh, you know. Um, in life... In life, we can either look at our failures or success, right? Uh, we can, you know, uh, one failure will, can define us, right? <laughs> and the 99, th 99 successful things uh, will be ignored, right? So it's, as a leader, it's important to, to continue evolving, continue looking uh, at all the, all the, um, you know, all the, mistakes we made and uh, grow from them you know and I you know you mentioned that it's it's the key to learn from the mistakes and continue evolving and don't let the mistakes uh create your future right don't let that bad experience define you in the future learn from it yeah no for sure and and Michael you I mean you you also are huge about mindset. And I talk a lot about mindset in the book and choices that you make. And, you know, for you as, as a successful uh, fitness champion, as a model, as a successful entrepreneur, you know, talk to me about what your mindset is and, and how you have discipline to do your workouts every day. Yes, the mindset, uh, the mindset is huge. Uh, uh, the, the earlier example I used, making that simple choice, making the bed, that is that is the commitment. Every morning we wake up, we're committed to making the bed, right? And and for me, uh, I'm committed. Uh, whether it's my client that I'm training, I'm committed. Whether it's at my uh, blockchain business uh, that I'm involved in, I'm committed. Whether it's the TV show that I'm involved with, I'm committed. The discipline has a lot to do with it. Obviously, I, uh, being an athlete, um, the discipline is is big element in uh, in the mindset, as you know. Um, so, with that being said, um, the, the mindset the mindset has has a big um, is a big foundation in uh, being disciplined and committed. Now, Michael, you're you're also a producer of a show. Can you tell me more about that part of your of, of what you're doing? Well, um, uh, in 2018, uh, I graduated Hawaii Pacific University uh, with a finance degree, organizational change and development. And, and uh, three months later, I went into acting school. Um, I joined Lee Strasberg Fil Film and Theater Institute in Los Angeles, prestigious um, theater. Um, a lot of legends are made there, including Marilyn Monroe, uh, Denzel Washington. I mean, any name, they all went there and studied there. So for me, being there, surrounding, be able to see, smell, feel, and touch some of the pictures of the, uh, of the past great artists and who are currently active in the industry, that really cre created a foundation for me, created a legacy. So I feel like I have a legacy to live, to 
So right away, uh, there was an opportunity presented with, uh, with a TV show called uh, Sangra Negra. It's up and running on Tubi now and Amazon Prime. And uh, being a, be, having that business background, education, and being a Marine, um, the opportunity presented itself. And I made a choice to get hands-on involved in the production right away. There's no, no better teacher than be involved hands-on right away. Um, so I've been with the TV show for uh, two and a half, uh, three years now. Uh, it's called Sangra Negra. It's a uh, political crime drama uh, filmed in Los Angeles and uh, Las Vegas. Uh, and I'm an executive producer on the show. And I have a little cameo later on and later on in episodes. So that's, that's pretty exciting as an actor too. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, Sangra Negra. It's called Sangra Negra. Oh, that's fantastic, Michael. And earlier you touched on, uh, you know, that you're you're part of a blockchain cryptocurrency company, and and you know you're on the cutting edge of that. Can can you tell me a little bit more about that part? Yes. Well, uh, it, the I've been in I've been surrounded in the in the uh, blockchain space. I've known about it since 2012, uh, since the military. Uh, and, and as I graduated college with a finance degree, um, <clears throat> again, I had to make a choice uh, what I'm gonna do for the career as far as the, all that education uh, I got. So uh, a blockchain and cryptocurrencies is a big factor in the finance and the way the economy is gonna move in the future. And uh, I started studying that in 2018. Um, and I've been involved with a company called Oduwa Blockchain Solutions. Uh, that is focused on the remittance industry, mobile payments, and it's and it's on blockchain. It runs on the blockchain technology. Man, that's you know it's fascinating, Michael, because as you know, last week Bitcoin passed uh, forty thousand dollars, and you know it's it just seems like you know to be where you were at the beginnings of, of it and learning more about it. A lot of people really don't know about cryptocurrency because it's so, so new. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? <laughs> I laugh because I, I've, you know, you ever have a, uh, I'll get back to you, to your question, but just to, to give insight to the audience who, who may be uh, watching uh, and, and involved in sales. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm that guy that's on my, you know, on my social media that's always posting about blockchain. You know, and uh, they're always saying, oh, here goes Michael again posting about blockchain. What's new? Here goes Michael again posting about blockchain. Consistency, right? <laughs> uh, my, my thoughts on that is that it's, it's going to be the future, Rusty. It's the future. We're seeing uh, health industries. We're seeing... Um, we're seeing um, um, finance, banking sectors. We're seeing um, uh, big retailers utilizing the, the technology, uh, the blockchain, which is an blo blockchain is very simple. I'll put it in layman's terms. It's a it's an open public ledger that's transparent, and uh, it keeps records forever. That's what basic definition of the blockchain. On that sense, well, no, it's it. You know, people are are afraid of the unknowns, right? And and that's that's mm -hmm. just normal. But to see the the uh, immense growth that that part of the market has had in the last few years is just mind blowing. And Michael, you know, when you look back on your life so far, um, what's what's something that you want to do? but you just haven't had a chance to do it yet? Hmm. Uh, well, um, going to Mars is, is, is going to be, is, is, I'm going to put that on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but getting, get it, getting grounded, right, back to the Earth. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of my goals is, uh, I have a nonprofit and, um, one of my goals is to open up a, a blockchain as a, a, a 21st century employment opportunity, uh, um, you know, your school uh, that offers AI, um, blockchain coding, 
um, I want to do that in Ukraine, my home country. It's, it, I feel that would be the best way to give back to my people. Um, it, that's something that I want to do. Um, I've been visiting Ukraine the last uh, seven years. I go over there, volunteer, uh, give my time and resources to kids. I love doing that. It's every leader, uh, every influencer should have some sort of a philanthropic cause. And I do that. And it gives me, it, it fulfills me, it gives me purpose. Um, but if I had a wish list right now, I would love to build a school there and um, empower the next generation youth to, to, to empower them to be sick uh, with uh, getting career that's gonna make sense in the 21st century. Michael, okay, so you, you said you've been back to the Ukraine um, to, to really help the kids. How many times have you been back to the Ukraine since you got adopted? And what, what has been the response from the kids uh, you know, when, you, when you're able to interact with them? Mm -hmm. I've been back for about you know, six, seven times now. Um, this year, the, you know, the COVID, uh, the tra travel restrictions would have been my seventh time. Uh, the kids, uh, the kids are amazing, by the way. They're just, um, I mean, it, if you could go adopt, adopt, you know, I, I'm definitely kind of adopt. Um, the kids, uh, they're, the kids, you know, when you're a child there, you got no worries in the world, right? And, uh, and that's how they are over there when they, when they see a former orphan when I get to share a story with them they're really uplifted and inspired and motivated uh, and my message to them love one another let's not let's not compete let's not divide but love one another because as a as a team together everyone will achieve more right <laughs> you know the saying um, it's been really wonderful uh, Rusty it's been wonderful in the sense that I can just it, you know, anytime I'm there, I get a, I get bags of groceries, right? Bananas, fruits, all the healthy things. And uh, what we do, um, we'll go out in the park and we'll exercise and we'll eat the fruit and we'll just, we'll just chat and we'll uh, share messages, good, good stories and good messages. And um, being a role model is, is, is great over there. <laughs> well, you know, Michael, it's amazing. You're, it seems like you're following the path of your idol, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I wouldn't be surprised if you become governor uh, someday as well, right? You never know. I am involved, <laughs> I am involved here locally with this sustainability uh, modeling. So um, there's, the world needs a lot of help, you know, and, uh, you know, I would complain early on, especially in the Marine Corps, in the culture, and what I've come to realize, to learn, is that if you want to see the change, you've got to be change. You've got to be that change. You know, it's very simple. Yeah, no, I like hearing that. And Michael, I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. I mean, you are someone that definitely goes beyond the lines. I mean, you're very inspiring. And I know you're going to continue to impact a lot of people in your life. Well, thank you, Rusty. Uh, the, I'm grateful to be here. Uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on your wonderful show, uh, Beyond the Lines. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Michael and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.